New York City, a colossal urban beehive, and the perfect setting for an astonishing game about human behavior. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Finding a needle in a haystack would be child's play compared to the contest you're about to see. A handful of players. Off we go. Do you want to take a taxi cab? Are coming by land, by sea, even by air to take a stab at Primetime's Mission Impossible. Good morning. I'm Jay Schaefer. And these are your instructions. There's another pair of people who are looking for you today over here in Manhattan. Really? They are strangers to you as you are to them. Your job is to find them. How you do it is completely up to you. Can we move in Uncle New York City? We are giving you $100. $100? To spend any way you wish to help you in your quest. Good luck. Wow. Courtney! So not what I expected. <laughs> so those are the instructions. That's it. And All of New York is your canvas. Five boroughs. Manhattan. We don't know anything. We have no idea. Who these people are. You have no idea who they are. They're somewhere in Manhattan, and you will be too. <laughs> Soon enough. <laughs> All right. How are we going to find them? That's your job. See that city behind you? They're somewhere out there, and they're looking for you. Think about it. How will you find them, and how will they find you? This is not going to be easy. Oh, my God. <laughs> How do we find a couple in New York City that we have no idea who they are? Six pairs of people, all total strangers, have accepted our challenge. Welcome aboard. David and Anthony are beginning on the Staten Island Ferry. Ian and Seth are way up north at Columbia University. Courtney and Lydia got their instructions over on the city's west side at the Javits Convention Center. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Jessica and Sarah begin downtown at Washington Square Park. Brad and Chuck are over on the Brooklyn Bridge. And Cynthia and Myrna are just coming in on the Roosevelt Island tram. One city, 12 people, a million ideas. Where would you go if you were going to Manhattan looking for someone? So, um, Empire first, Grand Central. There's also Penn Station, Port Authority. Oh, there's one place I always meet people. Grand Central. The, the clock. The clock. The Tiffany at clock at Grand Central. A public place like Washington Square Park, Times Square, or a transportation hub like Penn Station or Grand Central Station. Mom, guide us. <laughs> as daunting as the game appears, there's at least one fellow in town who thinks these folks are not necessarily on a fool's errand. We brought uh, teams to New York. He's Yale professor Barry Nailba. It seems like an impossible task at first blush. It, look, it's hard enough finding somebody in Bloomingdale's. In Dr. Nailbuff's classes on economics and management, he teaches something called game theory. It is the science of strategy. It's recognizing that the success of what you do depends on what other people do. Game theorists use math to describe and even predict how people will behave in a whole range of situations. One example, this scene from the movie A Beautiful Mind. If we all go for the blonde, we block each other. Not a single one of us is going to get her. In A Beautiful Mind, he has a situation where if they all ask, only one of them will be successful, and all the other women will feel left out. But what if no one goes for the blonde? So he changes the game. The best result would come from everyone in the group doing what's best for himself and the group. John Nash. In real life, mathematician John Nash won the Nobel Prize for his work proving there is a way for everyone in a group to be happy with the outcome. Now in our game, the only happy outcome would be for the strangers to find each other. But how in the world do they do that in a city as big as this? But I mean, look at Central Park, Ground Zero, Grand Central. Yankee Stadium. Yankee Stadium. I mean, the list is almost endless in New York, what places that everyone in the country would know. And so now the question is, uh, which one of those do you think the other people will think you're going to? They're trying to think of what we would do, and we're trying to think what they would do. Really, it's an experiment in common perceptions. Can I think about what you're thinking that I'll do? Can I put myself in your shoes as you're trying to put yourself in my shoes? So, you know. 
Instinctively, all of our players begin doing just that. Though they're still scattered across the city, they seem to be looking for common ground. Empire State Building, I thought of right away. What's that movie that they meet? It's you. It's me. Sleepless in Seattle. At the top of the Empire State Building. Shall we? People get engaged there a lot because of Sleepless in Seattle. You sing to one. It's nice to meet you. Smile that cheers you. A lot of people set up times to, yes, to meet at the top of the Empire State Building. Well, that's a great idea. They're expecting us to be there. Meanwhile, David and Anthony are still charting their course from the deck of the Staten Island Ferry. Somewhere in Manhattan. My gut reaction would be Times Square. If that's your gut reaction, I'll buy it. Jessica and Sarah are considering their options, too. Like Times Square under like the big tower. Let's go to the computers. OK. Ian and Seth are heading to the library to do a computer search on the phrase ABC News. Oh, they have ABC Studios Times Square. Oh, perfect. Where they film Good Morning America. I think maybe that's where we should meet. Finally, Chuck and Brad, who started on the Brooklyn Bridge, are on their way to Grand Central Station. Uh, do you want to take a taxi cab or? Oh, we've got $100 here. We don't have to jump on the subway. But the subway is quicker. On the way, they pause to consider another little puzzle that still lies ahead. Uh, how are we going to recognize these people? I have well, no they'll idea. They'll be looking as if they're looking. For right. Something. They'll be have a vacuous look on their expression <laughs> yeah. on their face, just like we will. So less than an hour after receiving their instructions, all six pairs of strangers are on the move. The first to arrive at what they consider a promising location, Grand Central, are Brad and Chuck. I don't know. Well, they're obviously not here. Well, hold on. They're not, they're not here. Anything I should know about, or are we, we can make an announcement? Warmer? We, we can, can make, make an announcement. An announcement. That's a great idea. So you have names of the people? No, we don't. No, no we just know don't. to any people. We don't know their names, names or their genders. Don't know sex, we yeah. don't know height, age, race, nothing. So how are we gonna get them to the? They're looking. Well, we're they're, they're looking for us. We're looking for them. That's does good. that work? That go. does give me something to work with. Okay, right. good enough. May I have your attention, please? Two people from ABC looking for. Other people from ABC report to the upper level information board. You should do this for a living. You. you should do this for a living. I swear uh -huh. to God. The announcement echoes across the great station, but at least for now, no one else is listening. Two persons from ABC looking forward to other people from ABC. Meantime, no wait until you see what game theory has in store for these people. I am shaking all over. Could it help them do what they've never been able to do before? When I come out, no one's making whale jokes, right? <laughs> Lose weight. When primetime returns. My God, this is insane. You realize we're never going to find these people. Back in the caverns of New York City, our players seem game. But the game seems impossible. We're going to Empire State Building. We have to find two people. We don't know what they look like. Uh-uh. No, they don't know what we look like. Remember, we have six pairs of total strangers, starting out from six widely separated locations, all seeking the others, but without a single clue as to who they're looking for, where they are going, and when they might get there. And yet, some of our needles appear to be converging in this concrete haystack. For instance, two pairs of women, both from out of town, are thinking about the Empire State Building. Hi. We want the no, Empire, Empire State, State Building. Empire State Building. Oh, Empire we should State be able to find State. that. For are going to say, show me again where we are. We are Jacob, right here. And then where's the Empire? 34th. 34th and 5th. It's one thing to pick a landmark like the Empire State Building. But in this game, it only matters if someone else thinks the same way. And Yale professor Barry Nailbuff says that requires putting yourself in their shoes. The success or failure of what you do depends on what other people do and how they react to what you do and how you think they're going to react. So life is a game. So life is a game. If you think about it, similar situations crop up all the time in real life. eBay, should you bid high early or only jump in at the last second? Depends on what you believe your competitors are thinking. Dating, waiting by the phone. Call too early, you might appear desperate. All too late, and maybe you're not interested. 
What is the other person really thinking? That notion of what he thinks that I'm thinking that he's thinking is, of course, the game that was also played in World War II. The well, Nazis are not aware of full-scale assault is in the making. In that case, the Allies tricked the Germans into thinking they would invade in Calais and then landed in Normandy. We're on our way. Of course, in our game... This is a big city, man. <laughs> the players aren't trying to outwit an enemy. Well, what if we're in one place and they're in another place? But to find a stranger. Hey, they always say when you're looking for someone, stay where you are. Exactly. <laughs> but if we both did that, it wouldn't work. If you're going to have someone meet you, do you tell them a time or do you just tell them a place? I don't even know if that's legal. This is probably a bad idea. Well, I mean, they're not going to arrest us, so just pull them down. And you think they're going to call our phone numbers? Hey, the phone numbers were your idea, big guy. Your <laughs> idea. We won't know for a little while if any of our players ever make their rendezvous in the Big Apple. Actually. Meanwhile, back in New York, Eight million people in a small island. Our other group of players feel like it may take the rest of their lives to find one another. Where are you? All six teams have narrowed the list of places to meet, but now have to decide on a time to get there. After all, if you're trying to find a stranger, you have to know where and when to look. Are they just going to go there at 9 o'clock and just stand around and wait? Well, I don't think so. I don't know. Curiously, just as there are landmarks in the physical world, there are natural landmarks in time and with numbers. We're looking for a clear demarcation that we're not going to cross. Noon is a clear time. Zero is a clear number. Imagine, for instance, you're trying to quit smoking. If I say I'm going from a pack a day to three cigarettes a day, three is kind of an arbitrary number. Why not four? Why not two? There's one number that has real salience to it, which is zero. And so if you're going to stop smoking, it's best to go cold turkey because zero actually has meaning. Or in the case of our New York experiment, noon is actually an interesting number. There's a slippery slope for any other number, 1123, 318. Why not 316? I somehow have to find one time that is different from all the others. Noon has some special significance. The first thought that popped into my head was like, oh, 12. And sure enough, almost <laughs> every one of our couples pick noon as a time to rendezvous. If there's a time during the day that is more significant than any other time, it's noon. Noon is, you know, high noon. I don't know, Gary Cooper, Grace Kelly. Before I, noon, it's morning. Obviously, I have no life. I've spent it in front of television watching too many movies. You guys looking for someone? No? David and Anthony have already come a long way. From the Staten Island Ferry, they go by Ground Zero, Penn Station, Herald Square, and then they make their way to Times Square. They figure they'll linger here until noon, near the tickets booth. Let's see if there's anybody back here. Let's, uh... If they exist and they're in our neighborhood, I'll recognize them. They exist. They're somewhere. A few minutes later, and just a couple of blocks away, Ian and Seth arrive at the Times Square studios of Good Morning America and begin posting signs on the windows. Oh, you're putting out flyers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. You think somebody's around here? All right. Better shot as any. Any, any tips? None. No, no tips. Wish I had some for you. All for right. now, no one is taking their bait. Ian and Seth keep fishing on one side of Broadway, while David and Anthony swim away on the other side. Still, they plan to make another pass here at noon. If they come in here, could you just give them this? Incredibly, just as Ian and Seth take their flyers and move to this police station at the southern end of Times Square, Sarah and Jessica stroll in across the street. Where are you? <laughs> but then, without ever seeing the other, they pass like ghosts on a crowded street. Where are you? As for Chuck and Brad... Hey, two people. Can I help? No. Oh. no, no. You sure? Okay, no problems. Surely they're not our two people. After finding no one at Grand Central Station, nor the New York Public Library... Well, what's going on? Strike that's two. That's a good question. Strike two. They decide to try the Empire State Building, where two other teams are already headed. So now, less than three hours after starting their searches, three teams are within blocks of one another in Times Square, and the other three are bound for the Empire State Building. The noose seems to be tightening, but with so many choices, it could still turn out to be a slipknot. 
It's a puzzle, all right, but no greater than the one still facing our six teams of strangers searching for each other. Three pairs are now within a few blocks of each other in Times Square, and three others are on their way to the Empire State Building. Thank you, thank you very much. First there, Myrna and Cynthia. Wait, there's a Walgreens, we can go right there. They've decided to make signs to make themselves more visible. Okay, here we go. So they stock up. We've got tape to make uh, name tags for ourselves. Okay. Suit up. I thought if I put mine on my backpack, we'd have it from a back view. Yeah. And then head up. Okay, here's our sign. I think this sign thing was really good. Yeah. 86 oh floors God. below. Right. Wow, well, here we are. Oh, my Percy God, building. we all the way up there. Okay. You think the top? Yeah. All right, okay. let's go. Courtney and Lydia have just gotten out of a cab. Not only have they thought of the same place as Myrna and Cynthia. Okay, let's go. They go for sign-making materials at the same store the other women left just moments before. And then suddenly, in a twist any game theorist would love, who walks into the lobby of the Empire State Building but Chuck and Brad. Hi, how you doing? I'm with ABC News. But they don't see Myrna and Cynthia. And since it's not noon yet, the time they picked as most likely to meet someone, they decide to wait outside before going to the top. Is Brad Pitt, well, is Jennifer pregnant, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, 100 second floor observatory. I think that's where we want to go. Oh, we want to go to the very top, don't you think? But now, Courtney and Lydia discover the Empire State Building has two different observation decks. One on the 86th floor, one on the 102nd. 86? Yeah. What's on the 86? I don't know. We said that's more popular than the 102nd. Oh, okay. Well, they're here somewhere. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> First up, the 86th floor. Women's wear, men's wear, and game theory. For several minutes, Myrna and Cynthia have been circling this floor without luck. Now, how do we get to there, Lisa? How do we get to 102? You have to go all But then, just as they're about to leave for the 102nd floor. Okay, is that cool? That's cool. All right. Okay. Strangers, no more. Woohoo! Are you looking for us? Yes! Ah! I cannot believe it. It's not long. even noon. How did you not know it was us? Uh, well, look at you. <laughs> oh, you find it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See? <laughs> see? Throw your minds, take a life. Is this where you came first? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is your first stop? Yes. Isn't that amazing? For the women, the game played out beautifully. But what about Brad and Chuck? And everyone's still scurrying about over in Times Square. You're not looking for anybody from ABC News by any chance, are you? No. Thank if you. this game had a Geiger counter, Chuck and Brad would be deaf from its alarm. On the 86th floor of the Empire State Building, they're so close to the gold. And yet, would they be outside looking sure. for us certainly on the be, street? It's as plausible as anything else. For more than five minutes, they wander through the tourists. Well, I don't see any anybody that looks, but it isn't noon yet. No, that's, I mean, that's true. And then, just as they are about to pass invisibly by the four women, uh, are you looking for two people from ABC News? <laughs> yes. Are so are we. <laughs> We're <your people. laughs> oh, I'm like, I'm Brad. ABC. Hi. Hi. How are you? Go fine, thank you. Hi, Brad. I'm now Lydia. To what... Incredibly, less than three hours after they began, three pairs of our strangers are all standing in the very same spot. Hey, congratulations. Hey, your project was successful. You. Does it surprise you in any way that in a city of millions, you were able to do this as quickly or? Very surprised, yes. Yeah. They expected no. us to find it without signs. Right. We're men. <laughs> we, know. We, we know. We decorated our bodies. <laughs> we need a huge megaphone. <laughs> but over in Times Square, the women aren't finding anyone. This feels so, like, pointless. Yeah, for sure. I'm bored. What if we got a bunch of balloons? How to draw attention? Yeah. Do you have whistles? Do you sell okay. air horns? Oh, perfect, they do. Ian and Seth are thinking the same thing. They're in a store just a few blocks away. Can be heard up to a mile away. Sounds good. Anything to draw attention to themselves. <laughs> there we go, that's how it works. That's pretty intelligent that we got that, by the way. I will, I will give you that. The air horn. I'm definitely going to notice <laughs> oh, if we're standing up this loud ass thing. Yeah. Meantime. I got a good feeling, man. I don't know if that means anything, but. 
David and Anthony's strategy is to just keep wandering and watching. Hey, 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 hey. Suddenly, hey, hey. at one of the busiest crossroads in the world. Those are people over there. Is that them? They stumble upon Sarah and Jessica. Show us your sign. Uh, Thank where you. are you? Right here. Hold that sign up. For a moment, confusion. Then. We're the team you're looking for. Oh. Huh. Celebration. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> They said we couldn't do it, and we did it, partner. Yeah, that's time. We got it, man. Congratulations. We did it. Well done. Well done. We did it. All of the excitement attracts a small crowd, which draws our final pair in like a couple of magnets. Are you, are you looking for a couple? Are you, are you ABC? Yeah. yeah. We're actually two couples. Oh, great! This is <laughs> fantastic! They got here first, but you were very industrious. You but you guys are early. Whistle. You said one o'clock. What's the way? You got a whistle? Yeah, we got whistles. We're, we're ready for the whole, you know, the the pop <laughs> Remarkably, in the strange magic of this game, in a city of millions, all six pairs of our strangers found each other in just a matter of hours. I didn't think you were going to all find each other, you know, I think, I thought maybe some, but are you at all surprised by the fact that it was unanimous? Everybody found each other. I was surprised at how quickly everyone found each other. Maybe we just got lucky that about the timing element of it. It wasn't that we all, 12 of us congregated at one specific spot. There were two locations, which I thought was more interesting than the fact that we all found each other. I think the fact that it was something that started out as the impossible task. Mm -hmm. Just ended up so simply. That was easier than I thought. That was a lot easier than I thought it would be. No million dollar prizes in this contest, just a few t shirts. <laughs> and the simple lesson that in game theory, like life, it helps to remember you're not alone in the world. They are playing the game, uh, the game of life, whether they want to or not. Other people are playing that game, and if they can understand a little bit better and be more sophisticated about it, they might do better. Okay, now who's going to take the picture? Oh. Of all of us. Right. <laughs>